name is Alijan Ravshanov, partner of Sturgeon Capital. I'm based in Tashkent. I'm responsible for um, startup and venture ecosystem development in Uzbekistan and helping our London team in um, uh, sourcing and evaluating venture deals in Uzbekistan. Excellent. Hello, uh, my name is Stephen Lin. I'm from California. I'm the head of Swift Launch, which is a new kind of incubator specifically designed for Central Asia, where we form new teams and guide them down the path of entrepreneurship. Hello, my name is Dylan Roberts. I'm from London. I work at Sturgeon Capital. Uh, I work in the, as an investment analyst in the VC department, helping Ali John complete the deals that he finds for us in Uzbekistan, as well as Central and South Asia more widely. Hi, I'm Shaq, uh, co-founder and CEO of Tesvision Startup Company. We're based from Uzbekistan. Uh, what's the Tesvision? So Tesvision is a, uh, provides in-store analytics tool for offline retailers to track and analyze customer relationship. So we just increase the sales performance. Hi, my name is Davron. I'm a managing partner at Alaco Ventures. We are actively investing and uh, we have corporate fund, but we are helping for startup ecosystem of Uzbekistan with IT Park. We are actively investing uh, in, two, in two years and this and yeah, mostly pre-seed and early, very early stage, five, uh, 50 to up to 250K is our check size. So <clears throat> I need to start with a joke because I'm Aziz back. If you go shack, you never go back. So I'm Aziz Beck, I'm co-founder at First InsurTech Startup in Uzbekistan. We help insurance companies to earn more profit. For customers, we provide the, the best interface in Uzbekistan to buy motor insurance policy. Excellent. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank Our first Thank you. question, what inspired you as investors or as startup founders, what inspired you to get involved with Uzbekistan's startup ecosystem? Uh, before joining Sturgeon, I was already involved in private investments in Uzbekistan. I was uh, managing um, the first uh, private equity fund in Uzbekistan, Ozaman. Um, at, uh, uh, there, I, I was thinking about um, um, technology businesses because technology business on market very few, but however, in the other markets, uh, the interest of investors for, for technology businesses are increase, increasingly growing. And I was also thinking about uh, uh, bringing investors to Uzbekistan and um, technology businesses to Uzbekistan and develop this ecosystem. And in 2018, I met um, Sturgeon Capital. So uh, they shared their uh, plan to set up fund here and which will be investing in technology businesses. So I happily joined uh, that uh, company, Sturgeon Capital, and f uh, during pandemic time, uh, we started investing in technology businesses, in the startups. So this, this, this was my journey to uh, startup and venture uh, ecosystem. Yeah, I'm a former banker of Alaka Bank. 100% of our LP limit partner is uh, Alaka Bank for our venture fund. Uh, we have been uh, planned uh, this uh, opening the venture fund many times, but we changed the legislation when I opened it. Uh, I'm a former uh, project manager of Zoomrat. Now it's uh, 1. million active users in this application. So we started doing this uh, for our ecosystem and uh, you, you know that uh, Zberbank and Caspi are doing the same thing. So we wanted doing the invest startups and acquire uh, most of uh, good uh, startups for our company. And with IT Park now, we are doing the uh, 55, yeah, 55% of the now is uh, invested startup in two years has now uh, belong to us. No, we are raising. It's a very interesting job for us, and I think venture uh, should be grow in Uzbekistan. Uh, and um, Sturgeon Capital is actively investing um, almost five years in Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. the, uh, he, uh, he giving technical assistance to us. He's my teacher, yeah, mentor. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <you>. So <coughs> my journey uh, started in 2018. Uh, I co-founded the first startup in Uzbekistan uh, that did alcohol delivery. Wow. Uh, 
uh, it was the gray zone. That's why we were the first one. But why we started this? Because I worked in many companies, in 10 companies. My first job was in a Poland company. It's, it was pharmaceutical company. The last job was American company. First communication agency in the world. Our clients were BMW, Henkel, Unilever, and etc. And all of them were inefficient. All of them were inefficient. They were super slow. They were super bureaucratic. They didn't have right HR. They didn't have right system that worked without the director, without the CEO. And I was always wondering how to build this kind of system. And I proposed many times in many job places to do so, but they were super negligent. And one day I quit my job with $300 rent apartment with my uh, young boy. He was two, two months old uh, at that time. And we started Sorta Bazaar because I understood that no one wants to build the system. So there is me, Aziz back that needs to build the system. That's why we started the startup. <clears throat> How do I go next? Um, my journey has started relatively recently compared to many people here, I think. Uh, I joined Sturgeon Capital around six months ago, first of all on a summer internship and now as a full-time investment analyst. Uh, I think I've joined a really exciting time. You've been here for much longer than I have at Sturgeon and our first fund kind of speaks for itself. There's a lot of exciting opportunities here, not just in Uzbekistan but in the wider region as well. And I think now that I'm joining, as we're beginning to close our second venture fund, I'm at the perfect point to start looking at the most exciting com companies in this country. Aboard. What's that, sorry? Oh, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Welcome. welcome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So my own story is quite a kind of an adventure. Uh, so I grew up in California. I went to UC Berkeley. And I, I've lived and worked in over six countries over my career, starting out as a stockbroker in Taiwan. Uh, but I've started three different companies um, uh, all over Singapore, U.S., uh, and now in Uzbekistan. And my, my, I guess my story with Central Asia actually started about 10 years ago. I was invited to, at a, to a university to give a seminar to an oil company. And I was told it was going to be a three-week workation, right, explore a new country, and see, see, see what the area was like. Uh, three weeks somehow became three years, and I, I started a very early entrepreneurship center at, in Kazakhstan. And I think the story there that's, that was really representative of the area, of this, this whole investment climate in general, is that my very first office uh, was actually the former KGB office of the country. And my job was to turn that KGB office into an entrepreneurship center where we could train young people to start new companies, to have more, more control of their lives, and to change their country for the better. Uh, I think Uzbekistan is in a similar position, and, and I'm, I'm excited and honored to be a part of the opportunity. Wow. Great. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So. Um, Looking to my childhood, childhood, so in my in my primary school when I was young, just uh, you know, I built a website. So I was a software engineer. I built a website for. <clears throat> there was a problem when uh, after graduation in the primary school, uh, we don't have any brochure. We have a brochures with a hard copy uh, to apply to the college or lyceum, but uh, but I want to solve this problem by providing electronic like, like a website when includes all college and lyceum in one place to look through their gallery, their interview with the rectors or with the just, I don't know, popular students, what's their major pros and cons, I mean like a SWOT analysis, and I did it. So it's like a social, not non-profit uh, website I built. So it was a magic for me at that time because when I build a website from my hand just in, in, in HTML and CSS and JavaScript using, and I said, wow, I just wrote something symbolic and word but at the front, I mean, in the front side, there is a website builds. So it was a magic at the time for me. And I understood, okay, what's the just uh, my mission in this world, in this material world? Uh, I asked a lot, but till today. So, uh, you know, I understood that technology is one of the, I think everybody will agree with me. So technology is one of the sector 
when you can transform the entire world and you can build a better world because technology can uh, can uh, I mean do expansion very fast just comparing to other sectors so at that time I know I know that I was worked as a conductor in the bus and helping my to my dad so conductors is a role who are just collecting the tickets and giving I mean uh, money for passengers so there was a problem between that stealing percentage of cash every day is up to 30 40 percent uh, and I want to solve it, just I did in hardware because I'm an amateur of uh, hardware and software and I was a fan of, of, of this, of this part. And when I built this hardware as my team and provided solution for the, I mean, best operators and I solved the problem and after a lot of just best companies come to me and say, hey, I want this to your solution. What I understood in this point is that, you know, it's, uh, I, feel, I feel like personally better and motivated when I help to other peoples, to other community, and after that earning money. Not just the first is the money, but second is the money, but first you are just helping. You're, you're doing something for people who want it. So this is the key point, you know. And uh, another point is, uh, okay, I did it, I solved this problem, but what's the just uh, personal mission, what I want from this world? So, because I don't know how many years I will live, only God knows, so that's why I think, uh, I should do some things that people want and transform uh, transforms the industry when I will be in a history. So let's say like a shack, just a, what innovator or philanthrop. This is my case. This is my just personal mission in this world, in, in this material world. That's why I just this is the first startup test vision. What we're doing right now, it's only the beginning. So it means that after just, I don't know, ex execution or the next startups will be just more and more uh, bigger to solve the bigger problem in this world because I believe that somebody should save this world and you know I want in addition I want to add that VC funds and a startup garage and all the just here just sitting with us so they're like in the back end I mean they're helping startups to grow fast for example if no VC invest in a startup or like a startup garage who just invest and they give attraction money for grow fast startups cannot survive so it means VC, angel investors, and startup garage, and any initiatives of this to support startups, help them to bootstrap fast in this. So it means that they are part of the changing the world for the better with the startup founders. Startup founders in the front end, they're just a figurehead. But VCs and angel investors, they're the in back end who are helping to support it. This is the key point. Yeah, it's a great speech. Yeah. Actually, we, last week we have met that uh, Steve Wozniak, Wozniak uh, he had a great advice for everybody. Uh, he said that do everything uh, from your love, not for money. Yeah. Just, and he said that if you do something is great, so everybody is trying to uh, do for your country. So I think we'll, yeah, we will do good advice to follow. Yeah. Shamsot is actually, through his own feelings, explained the whole philosophy of the, this venture, this <laughs> ecosystem. It's <laughs> 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 well done. Yeah. That really seems like a community. Yeah. Exactly. Well, this kind of segues into our next topic. How do you see the current state of affairs here within your community? How is it going? Where is all the talent? Um, what are the resources available for them? Now resources available, but talents we have a deficit with. We have a funnel, but in this funnel, firstly we need more incubators, as uh, Steven is helping us. Incubators, startup garage, then uh, acceleration program that best startups going to ventures. But now we are at a problem with our funnel. We need more talents. Uzbekistan uh, now doing uh, great things, exporting. Uh, uh, outsource BPO. Uh, this year it will be five. 100 million, but uh, we need more uh, talents who just starts, uh, develops startups. We need uh, very best founders. I think now, uh, now we are at the beginning, but uh, we should run. Yeah, I want to add one thing to your just words. So if, 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 we, if we want to find the talents, I mean founders just promising startups, I think uh, first we need a history. So we need a history hero from Uzbekistan who somebody did, I don't know, exit, I don't know, 100 million 
valuation or one billion unicorn. So and after that, the each village, I mean, at the each corner of the Uzbekistan, they will see the history and say, wow, yeah. it's possible. It's possible to do startup unicorn startup or you, you, let's say just 100 million startup. So why I cannot do it? So and they will start to, to do startup as well. So we have, I, 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 I want to say that we have enough talents, but they're not right now in a, in a uh, playground. So they will come when we have a history or a hero who will just promote this and to provide this just uh, big, big opportunity. Success for them. Cases. Yeah, success cases. We need success cases for sure. Totally agree with uh, Charles Zot. Uh, I think we have enough talents, but Uzbekistan is not investing enough for brand awareness. Just get the GDP. I'm an economist uh, by, by myself. Get the GDP and get the spending to promote chess and boxing in Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. And see top two sports in Uzbekistan. Yeah. It's chess and box, right? And how much are we spending to promote startups? Not the startup, not Shahzad or Azizbek, startup industry. When you don't invest, yeah. you don't see talents, right? Yeah. How Israel started? They said, come to Israel. Invest one million, we'll invest one million, mm -hmm. and we'll exit with a discount, right? There are so many talents in Uzbekistan. I know one girl who works at Rolls Royce. I know one guy who works at Boeing. Why are they there? Why they are not here? I think they feel comfortable there. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's climate is better there, yeah. and investment climate is better there, right? So we have enough talents, we just need uh, more focus from the government and on the levels of universities we need more focus. Yeah. Because I'm from Westminster University, Shahzad from Westminster University, all my co-founders are from Westminster University, 80% startup that I know they are from Westminster University. They never invested one dollar in the startup when we studied there but they nurtured the culture of entrepreneurship they had very good library they had uh, very good guest lectures they had very uh, nice people i met like a no, uh, no nobel prize winner for example in uzbekistan in tashkent within westminster university so this is what we need first you put the seed and then you can expect the shade if, if you don't put the seed, how can you expect the shade? This is the problem. Actually, uh, other universities' traction is not good. Sturgeon knows better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so it's, it's a difficult position the universities are in here. Um, and the, the thing is, is that universities are, it's, there's, there's been an explosion in a number of universities. And the universities right now are, are very worried about getting enough students for the following year. Uh, because they're all competing for students. And the, the current structure, uh, I guess, of that marketplace is that it, does, it doesn't bode well for cooperation. Um, and another issue is I've, I've seen many teams at, at Westminster. And I think one issue is that when I see these very talented young people, right, you know, very bright, very hardworking, many of them already have projects at, at, the, at the end of their school, schooling. And when I, when I tell them, like, they, they come to me for advice, I say, hey, you guys have a really cool idea, you guys could really push this. Um, what generally ends up happening is they, they get an offer from KPMG Right, and and then they have to look at themselves and say, do I do I spend the next six months getting unpaid? Right, or do I spend the next year being six unpaid, years. or or five years? <laughs> well, we wanna we wanna short like we're gonna shorten that at Swift Launch. Uh, do you spend the next five five years getting unpaid, or you know, or do you do what your family and friends tell you, which is take the KPMG job? Uh, and that that kills, I think, a, a big section of the incoming funnel. And so, and I can't, and then, you know, you can't blame them, right? Because, right, if, if you're, in, if you're in, you know, if you're at San Francisco, if you're at, you know, San Francisco or whatnot, you know, you have a couple of failed startups on your belt, that looks good in a job interview. Whereas here, right, you turn down, you're not just turning down one job, you might be turning down, you know, future opportunity. 
Uh, and when you look at this as an aggregate whole, it's, it's kind of, it's, 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 it's really is a shame because if you have 10 teams like that, you'll probably have a couple of successes, right? And, uh, and from an economic point of view, right, KPMG can afford to give a job ex extension to that offer for one year, yeah. right? Go try that startup. If it doesn't succeed, come back and you know, you'll be more experienced and we can use you yes. better, right? There's no economic reason Right for those young people not to be able to take that chance, yeah. and it's such. And the, if you think about the opportunity cost, it's staggering, right? Because there are startups. You know, ten of ten of those young students, ten of those teams, a couple would have succeeded, right? A couple of those succeeded. How many jobs would that have created, right? To hire more entrepreneurial people, yeah. right? So, so one thing we do at Swift Launch is that we we design it like we. It's a very long program compared to other programs in the area. Eight months as opposed to you know, a weekend or, you know, like, you know, like, or a couple or, or, even, or even one month, like eight months, we are significantly longer than everybody else. Uh, the reason why we do that is that we want people to still be able to have income, right? They, they can work, they can go to school, they can go have a job. And essentially, uh, we give them equity in a new startup when they commit to working full time after the startup has revenue to pay them salary. Right, we're trying to de we're trying to de risk, right? The process of becoming an entrepreneur, the process of becoming you know getting into a startup. How much equity you're just getting, or it depends on projects and. Depends a lot. Uh, depends a lot because we we it's it's hard to classify the Swift Launch model. We really need a new name. Uh, we're 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 a blend between an incubator and accelerator and, and a venture studio, yeah. because uh, we we start at the very very beginning. Uh, we start. We recruit people who who are completely new in entrepreneurship, but they have they have a drive, they have passion, and we we form them onto teams and uh, we give them an idea, and then we do biz dev to try to get them their first customer. Uh, the whole goal is start from pre team, right, all the way up to sustainable revenue and full time and, and full time entrepreneurs. Wow. Wow. I would love to <coughs> see. Uh, some innovation uh, within those companies like KPMG. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a case, uh, one girl wrote me on a LinkedIn mm -hmm. and she said that she had an idea but she doesn't want to leave job. Oh. She was four years older than me. She also graduated from Westminster University. Mm -hmm. And I talked to her and I said, I have an idea. Go to your boss and ask for money. Give the chunk of the share to the company and do that within. It was a UCL telecommunication company at that time. I said, go to UCL, take the money. She needed just fifty thousand dollars to make idea happen. I said, why not to do that? Because in US abroad, uh, in uh, developed uh, world, you go to your boss and you say, I have an idea, but I don't want to leave this job. I mean, I don't want to leave this company, and let's build something together. Because her idea was the telecommunication sphere why she needs to leave the company to make it happen right she has she has everything there she has lawyers she has accountants she has office she has like networking there within company and she can innovate there within company if she worked b line they have a b lab and everything and they will fund it but yeah yeah b lab <laughs> you see yeah. uh, kpmg be line if you're out there and you're listening. Yes. Right. Uh, we we like so I used to work in corporate innovation. I used to you know run innovation policy for a twenty billion dollar healthcare company. You know, we have the infrastructure, right? And we will with your team or our teams that we recruit. You know, I'm sure there are many problems at your businesses that can be easily addressed by IT or AI, right? For a drastically lower cost than you would expect, we can we can actually create those solutions and help implement them at your company. So, reach out. <laughs> so, uh, Dario will uh, get back to you with this part. <laughs> <laughs> they will ask like $800, $800 to equal this part. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I want to also kind of comment, maybe summarize uh, your topic, which is the state of... Effects. Yeah, mm -hmm. effects, yeah, of... Uh, the uh, venture ecosystem in Uzbekistan. I think the our ecosystem is still at a very early uh, stage. Maybe we can say it's infancy stage of development. 
because we started paying attention to this uh, sphere in 2018 and the real work started from 2019 and after that a pandemic came and we couldn't move so mm -hmm. we had really like two three years only to do a real work on development this uh, sector the startup and venture ecosystem and if you look our portfolio uh, we had investments like bills arzon apteca fin media and uh, tasvision sugurta bazaar yeah is through our uzvc uh, small investment fund so these guys actually ha uh, haven't gone through any startup garage or uh, other inc state incubation programs they were developing on their own because these people are were one of the very few talents available when we enter the market so there were not many opportunities that we could uh, any venture investor could select out of many many um, how to say uh, competitive um, screening uh, analysis so they were the only available good deals on the market so uh, as i said the state just started uh, paying attention to the sector and right as is back said we need investments i think it also comes with people who are in the government when there are more people understanding this system like sherzot shermatov the minister of uh, it development is really good um, official and i think he's one of the very few uh, startup my uh, minded uh, official i think we need more such people who could uh, bring um, uh, uh, the, the agenda to the, the government meetings the government gatherings and will support uh, this um, initiative and also um, if you look uh, at the, the other countries uh, like us is the largest uh, largest market they also had a similar problem in the beginning but uh, the real the real growth came to technology sphere after 20 30 years when people started understanding the values of the digitalization so uh, if we provide a tool of talents and investments but if market is not ready if consumers are not ready to buy what they pro provide i think there will be less value from from that so we should also think about the demand side not only the supply side so demand side should be also educated like for example uh, zood mall and zoom is educating consumers to e-commerce through their um, marketing programs uh, through their uh, conferences events and also the through the business so, um, with the with the more and more coming closer to the consumer's house like Uzum is opening 500 <coughs> points of sale right in yeah. just in Tashkent yeah. city so it says that you are they're coming very close to your home so it means that there will be less barrier between the consumer and the real e-commerce provider so i think this will uh, by time i think it will bring uh, its fruits and i hope in uh, five years time we will be a much different scenario where there will be more people and <coughs> around this table will be more talented entrepreneurs and also uh, accept um, just educational classes like uh, Steve is providing to Uzbek young people. I really appreciate this initiative, by the way. Thank you. And uh, we need more real entrepreneurs with investment ability. What I want to say, uh, now we're telling about the people who are just uh, studying at startup garage or startup studio and coming to the uh, startup industry to open up their businesses but if you look other countries like indonesia or some other bigger markets 
So there you can see unicorns uh, through the exit they are making a lot of their team members wealthy after the exits. So these team members with certain millions in the pocket say they can go and set up better startups because they are now they have experience as well as money. The first money should come from the entrepreneur, not from the VC investor. When it is comes from the entrepreneur himself, I think they will be more convincing story for uh, VC in uh, for, for the in VC community. Absolutely agree. This is how it started in US. Pi PayPal Mafia. Uh, they earned a lot of money. They had fund and they started to invest. And uh, this is how so many companies like started, established, and etc. Yes, I, I agree with you with skin in the game. What you're telling is skin in the game. When you put your money, uh, besides your time, of course, you risk with something. But uh, mostly, so I'm talking from the side of uh, startupper and angel investor. Because I angel invested one startup uh, half a year ago. I'm still investing into that startup. It's energy startup. So I, I'm trying myself in both spheres because I'm not involved there. I just give money and some direction. I'm full time involved in Sukhurta Bazaar. And uh, the guy, the guy is 40 years old. He is engineer. He left his job. He was living in his apartment for six months eating rice and water because he didn't have money and he borrowed from everyone and he built an MVP. I heard the story, he's also from Bukhara, I heard his story, I gave money and I saw the second MVP, I gave money and one Two weeks ago, he raised $10,000 and now he's raising half a million dollars because it's energy sector. In six months, yes, he, he didn't invest his money, but he invested his soul. It was soul in the game, not skin in the game, right? So I love this story. I, I totally agree with you regarding uh, the ecosystem. Actually, it's taking, by investing, I mean taking a lot of risk by borrowing from the close relatives, from friends, from everybody, I think it's uh, making his very big risk, mm -hmm. yeah. which, which deserves a um, reward. Mm -hmm. I, I like stories like that, because it shows, uh, so it shows a level of commitment and passion that's already existing in this market. But, but from a systematic view, right, I want to get entrepreneurs to the point where they where they don't have to take that kind of risk to succeed, right? I, I want to make like I respect the people who do that, but I want to make it easier so people don't have to and still succeed. <laughs> so that's 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 and I think that's uh that's kind of where we we are and like because when I first got here, um, I, I you know I taught at a university to test you know you know if you know this model was possible. Um, and I noticed that there's there's a lot of all the all the right pieces are here, right? You have you have su surprisingly sophisticated technical ability, right? You have you know you have funding in, located in different places, you have training located in different places, um, and you have a lot of very cooperative people, but those pieces. Or like it's it's like a, it's like imagine imagine you know a kitchen right, with with in, with the best ingredients in the world, but all the ingredients are kept in different refrigerators, right? And no one's and like and people we haven't put them all together yet, right? It's not plov yet, right? It's not plov yet, <laughs> right? You, you got the oil over here and the rice over here and everything is great, but it's it was not coming into sheep running over there, right? No one's making the plov, right? And, and I think that's uh, one of the amazing things people at this table are doing uh, in that we're bringing all those pieces together into, into, into some amazing plows. Right. Well then, who do you think is that person to be the chef to make the plow to make this happen? I think it's a collective effort. I think you made a great example, Aziz, about investing. 
as a start as a founder yourself investing back into the ecosystem through other startups i think it starts with people like us the venture capital firms the accelerators the incubators the studios to find the right people with the right ideas the right motivations invest in them and then it becomes kind of a self perpetuating cycle where you guys return the favor to other investors through angel investments and then hopefully those companies grow under your guidance and your initial investment to the point where they can receive investment from people like us and then it continues and it continues and it builds and builds and then eventually there is plov inshallah <laughs> <laughs> That's also like how then does government regulation or government or state involvement or regulation within the system how does that either support or hinder the growth of this ecosystem It's crucial when uh, you start your ecosystem in the beginning but now uh, we need private uh, venture funds private investor angels network now government will give them incentives maybe some uh, giving them legislation for example in Kazakhstan the uh, the don the uh, like model like, like the AFC, Singapore, Common Law, yeah. Uh, their uh, Asana Financial Innovation Center gives some uh, good, uh, for example, if you all want to open a GP, uh, LP uh, agreements, uh, opening a P or any kind of VCs, you need uh, legislation. So we, government should help at the beginning, a fundamental level of any kind of uh, incentives. Now it's just, well, give your year and IFC is helping for us and giving their recommendation for developing a startup ecosystem. Then uh, if there's uh, facilities, any uh, kind of uh, business starts, it, it's uh, originally, it's naturally becomes. So in Kazakhstan now, uh, well, billionaires all investing, though, for example, Timur Tulov invested 35 startups in, uh, in this region. Now, and they have a success case. I know the guy from Excel, uh, Georgia guy, George. Uh, Georgi. Is George, George. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. George. I, I call him George. Yes. In, in Excel, they're investing. Uh, they're Georgian and Azerbaijanian investor club is very developed. They're investing. For example, uh, I, I will give the example. When uh, one startup came to George, he invested 10K, 10,000. And uh, in short period of time, he sold his share one million. It's, it's a case. So we, our entrepreneurs, our angel business network also needs some success cases because everybody investing in real estate now because uh, it's real estate so return on equity is very high now. But innovation, making it happen, needs some culture. So at the beginning, government gives them some incentives. Uh, I think in. UZBC and even Alaka Venture, Corporate Venture, Uskart VC is also helping there. Um, but we need more private uh, investors also because it makes uh, boost a startup ecosystem. So as one of the biggest hindrances there is the society as a whole is unaware of yeah. the potential of startups. But yeah, we're talking about government, so let's talk about, about the government. So let's segregate the role of the government as regulator, as an investor. What you said right now, it was investor, right? Uh, if you talk about government as a regulator, right, where you can s start a company like in the U.S. C Corp, right? You you establish the C Corp, uh, like I did a few weeks ago in Delaware. So you uh, establish the C Corp, and this is the best legal uh, type of a company for startup. But if you even if you don't have C-Corp, you can have a startup. Even if you don't have the common law, you can have a startup. You have Kazakhstan here, you have Singapore, you have Delaware. You can open an uh, established company there. It's not the problem. Problem is super different. Uh, the problem is we need more risk takers. This is the problem. So government is not hindering in any means. It's not hindering as a regulator. As an investor, yes, it is hindering. For example, if you go to Aloka Ventures, right? They have government money. Yeah. They have government money. That's why even to invest 100K, they make technical audit. No one in the world to invest 100K does the technical audit. No one. If they invest like 10 million or 50 million dollars, they do technical audit. 
Why do they do so? Because it's a government-owned company, and they have reports. They have many questions, and this is one of the problems. I yeah, agree if you with go that. angel investor in just sitting and giving money, it's very easy. Mm -hmm. But so that's why it's a little bit hindering. Yeah. <clears throat> but we make too sure that uh, we need we need some time. We need three five years to to solve these issues. Because when you look to, I mean, Silicon Valley and other countries, everybody starts with the government, government grants, etc. From the Cold War, so they started to do, to giving grants, a lot of money, pushing, etc. Like, a, uh, what I mean is, we need time to to regulate the situation. But we are the, the the key point is we are in the right direction. So, and we need to focus on it and be dedicated, and and, and go forward. So it takes time. So. Uh, I, I think, in my opinion, so in the next three five years, we'll have startup who has just valuation, you know, one hundred million and more, yeah. Uh, because the another issue is that uh, uh, the problem in Central Asia is that the market is too small for startups. So this is another problem. So uh, I, I think VC funds and incubators would agree with this about the startups who are right now starting in Central Asia. Founders mindset. Right now, it's only focused on Central Asia market, but Central Asia market is a very small market. So it takes time for founders' mindset to grow, to grow, to grow, and to expansion in Europe or U.S. or Western world or Southeast Asia part or many countries. It's a bigger market, but it takes time for founders to change their mindset to know how to grow fast at that countries, because um, when we st uh, so there's just uh, two. I mean, directions, when we have a lot of money and they put a lot of money into the startups and startup founders' mindset is not like a worldwide, so only focusing on Central Asia, it's not a big deal for VCs. It's not, it's not a huge ROI for VCs to make history, etc. Yeah, that's why we need more incubators and that's why we need more garage startup who can support in, in the beginning of to, uh, to, to do local, but, but act like a global, just... Uh, uh, because, you know, um, I, I will not say that only regulators problem and VC, we don't have a huge gap between angel and VCs. I think it's okay for right now. We, we, need, uh, we need more founders who, uh, who are focusing to do global, who can give a value from his startup to companies or customers to other countries, not only in Central Asia. This is the number one. Because, you know, when, you, when the startup grew in other countries, for example, in Turkey or Europe and the U.S. market, and he enters to that market, there are a lot of just thousands of VC funds who are ready to invest if they're pro doing product market fit at that country. So I think the problem is raising investment. It's not the problem right now. So if you can just uh, go globally, you can easily find the money. So the problem is the mindset, too, for founders. This is another scenario, too, to make, to make, yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I <coughs> partially agree, uh, partially disagree. Uh, and and, the, and I, on, the, on the part of mindset on, that we need to help train the next generation on how to think entrepreneurially, think uh, from a bigger picture view, think laterally, that I, I, I do see that we like, that's something that will change and is changing, especially with the young generation here. Uh, on the question of, say, government regulation, uh, the idea of you know another five years is needed, government grants is needed. Uh, that I, I I would somewhat disagree with because five years is a very long time for a startup, and for the current existing entrepreneurs, you can't tell them, hey, great idea, you can get great customers. Now wait five years for the right law to come along. That is not the approach the government should take. Like the government, I think the government here can also adopt entrepreneurship attitude can also adopt entrepreneurial uh, mindset right because these government regulators want the same thing right it's not an adversarial relationship it's 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 a partnership right how do we create the environment how do we create a garden with the right environment for these teams to grow right so so and I think honestly there are many simple things very low-hanging fruits that the government can do that is not a lot of work, but could create massive impact among the ecosystem. 
for example, like, um, you know, I've started com com companies in many countries. Uh, I mean, you know, yes, like, I don't know, like, I worked in corporate America, I worked in startups overseas, uh, and there are many basic things here, right, that could be changed. For example, um, say, like, the way, the way banks are regulated, right, uh, it's not easy to be a bank here. And, and the follow-on impact of that, it's extremely difficult to do ba like many basic banking functions. Right, I you know I've, I know I, I've you know I've sent money overseas you know in other emerging markets, right? I thought I knew what to expect, right? But you know it's it's like oh, you know making it easier for banks to to do a good job would be a great thing for the system, right? And not just that, but um, I've incorporated a company here, right? I've attracted investment. That process, right? That process is legally like, extremely complicated, right? For, if, for example, if, I'm, you know, if I want to incorporate a company in Denver, uh, Denver right now, it'll take me about 30 minutes from my phone and I'll, and I'll, I'll know what's completed and done, right? To do the same thing here with an external investor, you know, I have to spend, you know, I have to spend weeks finding the right lawyer, right? And they have to go out and research the problem, right? And it's, it's a long, long process of which I'm still not certain, right? Like this isn't, this isn't rocket science, right? This is a problem that's been solved many times, like in, in pretty much every single country with, an, with, an, with a startup ecosystem. Uh, I, I think regulators, right, they, they want the same thing we do, right? And, you know, and the, one of the benefits of Uz, you know, being Uzbekistan is that Uzbekistan can learn from the experience of other countries, right? Uzbekistan doesn't need to do trial and error, right? The solution has already been done multiple times in many places. So I think, I think regulators can also do an incredible job uh, to improve and catalyze the ecosystem. Good. Um, uh, as I said uh, in the beginning that uh, we are in the state of just um, development and uh, we are still um, trying to change and develop the ecosystem and I think uh, the change is being uh, in a very uh, right way and we have every year have more and more positive uh, impact on, uh, on the ecosystem. Um, before, uh, before that government tried uh, a number of tools to develop uh, the ecosystem. First of all, the, through the Minister of Innovation and through some other vehicles, government gave technical assistance and grants to uh, potential entrepreneurs and young people. But after a couple of years, they understood it's not uh, working very well. So they tried another tool, which is uh, as a, to the, adding to the Azizbek's note, that the government as an investor understood that uh, it's better to give this job to professional managers. So uh, therefore, in 2020, the government signed a resolution uh, setting up UZVC. It's a state-owned national venture company and gave it to, uh, to Sturgeon Capital. Now we have uh, investment management agreement with UZVC and we managed a fund a little over $1 million and we invested in Tasvision, in Sugurta Bazar, and eight, seven other uh, Uzbek startups. I think it's just beginning, as I said, when we are hoping to get more funds from the government through the UZVC and invest in more uh, startups. Uh, regarding grants and technical assistance, it's not only the government who is actually providing this kind of uh, money to startups. The international development agencies are also in working in in this sphere, it's not a, only our um, invention. For example, UNDP or Islamic Development Bank, EBRD. so EBRDs, yeah, yeah, a lot TV. of others. Mm -hmm. For example, and I wouldn't say that uh, the startups who are getting assistance are failing. No, for example, take the Zippel, uh, which the first money was from the also the IED, IDB and a pastoral in our uh, Uzbekistan portfolio, they were also getting assistance from UNDP. 
and there are some other cases. So it's a very promising future, it seems. Yeah. The incentives seem to be aligned uh, from what I've seen. You see the light? <laughs> it's our future. <laughs> Does anybody have any last words for promising new startup founders? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Don't stop. Going. Don't yeah. take the job at PwC. <laughs> Carry on doing your startup, and then come and talk to us. Yeah. No, there's. Yeah, I, yeah, I think one moment I I would, um, my advice to the stakeholders like the either it's government or private. I think we should bring um, to the audience more successful people, like especially successful entrepreneurs who are creating jobs, who are creating values, and who are taking the burden from the, uh, from the people. So these people should be appreciated and sh they should be announced as heroes, as uh, not only show uh, stars or the other um, the, the real celebrities should be from the from people of helping other people, especially in job creation, especially in giving opportunities to young people. Mm -hmm. This should be, they should be in the front. Mm -hmm. oh. I think uh, one topic we mentioned earlier was the the attractiveness of investing in Uzbekistan to to foreign markets. I recently read an interesting article. Uh, Jim Rogers, you know, probably you know, a fairly legendary investor, right? He called the commodities boom in China. Like, you know, did a lot of really cool things. Uh, he recently wrote that uh, the where he saw the next two big countries for investments, the next, like the, the overlooked markets that investors really need to take a look at, right? Was number one was Colombia and number two was Uzbekistan. And I think that he, he really nailed it on the head in a sense of being ahead of the curve. Because, I mean, yes, Uzbekistan has some challenges. Every country does, especially in developing, right? But if you look at the potential here, right, you have a very literate population, like a large population, integrated in an area that has been overlooked by investors for decades, right? Uh, and you know, I think IT is on the cutting edge of that. But if you know, if if international investors are willing to take a step outside the box, right? Besides just say, oh, you know, follow the herd. If we're willing to take a closer look at what is beneath the surface, beneath the brand, right? You'll find something of real substance here. And I encourage international investors to just take a look for yourself. Thank you. <clears throat> I didn't know about that article. I just have a small comment. Uh, if you're a startup, it's okay to, to start up to be a side hustle because two, I did three, yeah, three startups. All of them started as a side hustle while working. And after 6 p.m., you have so many hours. You have, uh, you, you can experiment you can invest one thousand dollars two thousand dollars to test your hypothesis and it's okay start up to be side hustle but you will hear the voice from your gut you'll have the gut feeling when the god will say you not god g-u-t but g-o-z god god will tell you when to leave the job and you need to be able to hear that voice and then you need to leave your job and do your startup. Or if you, or, <laughs> or, <laughs> or, if you want to explore. I'm generating leads for you. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to keep your job and still have a real chance of owning a valuable startup by the end, you know, by end of a program, there is a program called Swift Launch where you don't have to quit your job Right, where you'll get a team, an idea, and even some basic funding to get your MVP started. Right, because once you get customers, right, once you get customers, cash flow solves a lot of problems, and then you can build your own job with your own startup. So check out Swift Launch. Yeah, I want to add um, <clears throat> about uh, so the advice to the startups who are doing startup. So. 
you want to, you want to understand that you are doing a cash cash cow company or just uh, about the valuation i mean to raise investment etc from vc funds and angel investors so if you want to cash cow company you need to focus on your local market and be dedicated so but if you want to do startup with the rising investment each year or each two years with evaluations and such because only VC funds and angel investors give valuation nobody only VC funds and angel investors so you need to go just not on, not doing only in your local market you should go to another market and do product market fit and have customers this is a key point so because in this scenario you have a high chance to I mean to win the time in the, in the short time to grow fast and to have a high valuation and to go just globally this is just we should differentiate between two wh which direction you want to choose okay. compared to uh, entrepreneurs uh, sort of founders should be uh, more creative um, I recommend uh, any founder to be more creative because uh, other companies or global companies entering our market. This market is big compared to other uh, our um, neighbors. So I think now we have anything for start. If you want to start, be more creative and start hit the market. And every investor sitting here will be you. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you.